Hi, my name's Andy, and this is part nine of my first Raspberry Pi game. Uh, we're, we're making a very simple uh, computer game uh, that works on your Raspberry Pi. Um, when you see a green thing, you've got to press the key. Um, uh, we've done that bit. Uh, when you see a red thing, you cannot press the key. We haven't done that bit yet. Uh, what we're going to do today is just put a few instructions on the screen, and we're also going to practice a technique uh, called refactoring, uh, which is just changing your program without changing what it does. Uh, so do have a look at the blog post. Um, I seem to have written a really long one uh, this time. It's, uh, we, we, it's, we're not doing that much, but we're changing a lot of functions that are already there. So I've got the whole function print written out every time. Anyway, um, if you look in that blog post, you'll find uh, the full version that you should end up with at the end, which you can check against mine. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, our blog post. Uh, sorry, uh, at uh, our code as it is at the moment. Um, now at the moment we do have one piece of writing that we write on the screen, this time we're going to make quite a few other pieces of writing. Um, and the way we're going to do it is take the code we've already got to write on the screen, um, remodel it a bit and then reuse it. So um, the first thing we're going to do is refactoring. What refactoring means is uh, changing the structure of the, the code so that it's in some way better uh, without changing what the code does. Uh, so. Um, uh, we'll find the pieces of code that write the text and we're going to extract them out into their own little function. So the pieces of code that write the text are this bit here, which makes a font and then uh, renders that font into an image, which is the uh, image of the word ready written inside a rectangle. And then in another piece of the code, we work out where we're going to write this text and then we write it onto the screen. Uh, we're going to combine those two pieces together. So, where are we going to put that? We're going to make a new function. We're going to call it write text. I'm going to put it right at the top here. So, write text. Now, all it is, oops, one, two, three, four, is take the stuff that we had before. Um, and put it all together in here. like so, and we need to call this function from somewhere, and where we're going to call it from is the second place the second place where we had code before, we're going to call it from here. So now ready screen, when it wants to write ready, it calls write text, and write text does all that stuff that we used to do. So um, the observant among you might notice that this is a, um, slightly different in meaning, because this uh, creation of this image is going to happen every single time we call write text, and not just once when we called start, like it would have done before. If we'd called ready screen lots of times, which by the way, we're not doing it, but if we had called ready screen lots of times, we wouldn't have had to do this rendering part lots of times. Now at some point we may change it back again so that we only ever render something once, but what I've found is it doesn't take that long to render, um, so I'm fine with that. Anyway, what we've done is we've changed our program, um, and uh, uh, restructured the way it works, but we but it still uh, does the same thing. So let's save our program and let's try that out. So dot slash red green dot pi. If we've done it right, it'll work exactly the way it used to work. So we'll see ready written on the screen. And there it is, still works. Okay, so that's refactoring. Uh, we're going to do a bit more of it now. What we're going to do now is this function is not actually very useful because it, all it does every time is it writes ready on the screen. So we're going to make a few changes to it to make it better. First thing we're going to do is we're going to rename ready text. We're just going to call it rend because I couldn't think of a better name. So rend everywhere we use it, we rename it. So now it's called rend. And the next thing we're going to do is instead of this function always writing ready, we're going to take in some arguments that tell it where to write, what to write, and what color to write it. So. What screen should we write it on? What writing should we write? And what colour should it be? Notice I always spell it the American way when I'm writing code, because otherwise I get confused between... Sometimes you have to spell it the American way, sometimes it's your own variable name, so you wouldn't have to. Um, I just always do. You can do what you like, but... I try and avoid confusing myself wherever I can manage it. So, what I'm doing here is I'm changing this code, so instead of using uh, uh, the hard-coded stuff we were doing before, which was that it always drew it in white, 
and it always wrote ready. Now I'm using these arguments of text and color, and I'm using the screen one that was it's actually already globally available, but um, uh, I'm now passing it in. But while I'm here, let me get rid of this. We don't need that ready text anymore because we're only making rend inside here, and we're never reusing it. So in our ready screen, oh, and look, we don't need it there either. Okay, in our ready screen function. We call write text, we pass in screen, which is globally available, we pass in ready, which is the writing, and look, I was clever and I copied and pasted that um, pygame.color white so I didn't have to type it again. Um, so when we when we want to write text, we can now say, I want to write it on the screen, this is what I want to write, and this is what color I want to write it. And the write text function takes in that stuff and uses it to do the writing. So let's just check that works again. So again, what we've done is we've refactored our code, but it should be behaving exactly as it did before. And it does. And a note to um, those who are watching this who know a little bit more about refactoring. Normally, when you talk about refactoring, you talk about it uh, in the context of writing tests. Uh, I 100% agree with that approach. I'm not writing tests in this tutorial because I thought it would just be too much to handle all in one go. Maybe you disagree. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do, just to make life tidier and easier, is I'm going to take this and put it in a variable called white instead of making it in the middle there. It just makes uh, the code a bit shorter. And I'm going to save it. And again, the program will still work how it used to. Um, uh, now I've got one more change that I want to make, and that is I want to be able to write writing either big or small. And I want to use the same function to do both things. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make an argument in the write text function called big. And if uh, the writing is going to be big, you're going to say true for this, which means yes, I want it big. And if not, you're going to pass in false, which will write it small at the bottom of the screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an if, just like the ifs we've seen before. And if big is true, we're going to do this stuff. And what we're going to do is this. We're going to get hold of a, a thing called height. Oh, in fact, and that that height is going to be this, the height of the font. So I'm going to take it away from where I'd written it there and instead use this variable that I've made here. So I make a variable called height. If we're saying big, then height is the screen height divided by 5. And uh, just to make it... Uh, you um, make it a little bit more flexible, this write text function takes in what screen it's writing on. So we don't know for sure that the screen it's writing on has this height, screen height here. So instead we're going to use screen, the screen that's passed in, and say give me your height, and then we're going to divide that by 5. And then we're using that height to know how big we're doing the writing. Okay, makes sense so far? The next thing is how far up the screen do we want it? And here, previously, how far up the screen we wanted was got from here. So let's move that out and put it up here and just use that variable that we've made here. Okay, so now when we call write text, we have to pass in this big. So write text is called down here and we're going to say true because we want this ready text to be big and in the middle of the screen. Okay, let, once again, let's try our program. And it should still say ready in the middle of the screen and it does. Brilliant. So, again, you might be asking, why are we doing all this work and nothing useful is happening? So, let's finally get to a bit of code that does something differently if you pass in a different argument. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, if 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. If you didn't pass in big, you wanted the writing to be small, we're going to have different answers for these variables, different values for the, these variables. And what we're going to have is screen.getHeight. divided by 12. So small writing is one twelfth of the height of the screen instead of one fifth. And how far up we want it? Well, what we want is that we're going to put it at the very top of the screen and then move it up a bit. And the amount we're going to move it up is screen.getHeight divided by, let me look it up, 24. So what we're saying is almost at the bottom. So if it was at screen.getHeight, that would be right at the bottom. That would be right at the bottom of the screen. If we said screen.getHeight, 
we'll be writing halfway off the bottom of the screen. So what we say is move it up a bit, and the amount we want to move it up is the screen height divided by 24, which notice is half of the height of the writing. So um, we're saying that put the middle of it, half of the height of the writing above the bottom, which means that basically it's written at the bottom of the screen. So now if we pass in, if we say that big is false, we get into this half of the if, and we put our writing at the bottom of the screen and smaller because this we're dividing this number by a larger number. Okay, so uh, again, let, uh, no, let's not try it out again because we haven't actually done anything interesting. Let's make use of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the green shape, and what we want to say is when there's a green shape showing on the screen, we want to say uh, to the person, to the player, press a key so that they know what they have to do if they've never played the game before. So what we're going to do is go to the green shape function and say write text. Uh, write it on the screen, just like before, and we're going to say press something, um, and uh, I've lost my place, hold it, I've got my notes over here, I'm desperately trying to find my way through, and we're going to say write it in, bra in black, pygame.color, black, and we're going to say, instead of true, like we said before, we're going to say false. Which means, write it small, not big. Because if it's true, that means big is true, that means write it big. If it's false, that means big is false, which means write it small. So, we're going to say write text. And what we want to write is press something. We want to write it in black. And we want to say write it small. Okay, so let's try that, shall we? Save it. Run it. So now we've written our reusable function, we get to use it. So it says ready, just like it did before, but now when it shows the green, it says press something. And we didn't press something, so we failed. Okay, so you see how because we've written this reusable function, we get to use it again. There's a lot less work uh, writing that text than it was writing our first bit of text. I think you'll agree. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to say, we want to write something if you succeeded or if you failed. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go to the green success thing, and we're going to write something about how well done you pressed a key when you, you should have done. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this tick function, because what tick does is draws a load of stuff, and then it does a pygame.display.flip. But I don't want to do a pygame.display.flip at the end of here, because I've got more stuff I want to do after I've drawn a tick. So get rid of that. And instead, after we've called tick, we'll put it in here. I'm going to do exactly the same thing for cross. This is this function here is cross. Get rid of it from here, and instead do it after, just after we've called cross. So exactly the same effects as before, but we can put something in here in between, and that's what we're going to do. So let's get hold of a couple of colours. We'll have a green colour, and we'll have a white colour. We're going to use these to write some stuff on the screen. We're going to write two things. What we're going to write is... You know what, I just had a thought. If I make my notes a bit smaller, I won't have to scroll around so much. There we go. Okay, so we're going to write some text. We're going to write it on the screen like we always do. We're going to say, well done in big. in green. So true means big. And we're going to write something else as well. We're going to write you pressed on green at the bottom in small. It's an exclamation mark. And we'll write that in white. Okay. And we're going to do something very similar down below. So let me copy it. So copy. Go to here, paste. But this time, we're going to write something in red. So let's make a variable called red instead of one called green. And let's fill it with the color green. And then we're going to write stuff in white. And what we're going to write is at the bottom, we're going to say bad luck. For some reason I've got capital L in my notes, so I'll leave it the same. And we're going to explain what you did wrong. Green means press something. Okay. 
Okay. Now, the only thing, the only other thing we need to do is we need to move our tick because we've got some writing here that says well done or, or some writing that says bad luck. We need to move our tick and our cross up. Otherwise, they'll be on top of each other. So the way we can do that is the middle of the cross is here. So if we say, instead of halfway up the screen, if we say just a quarter of the way up the screen, and here we do the same thing, just a quarter of the way up the screen, then our tick and our cross will appear in the right place. So, let's let's try that while we're, while we're there. So, it's going to say ready. It's going to say press something and let's do it. And when we do it, it says well done, you pressed on green. Brilliant. Now, right, let's try one more try. And this time, let's not press on anything. So, ready. Don't press. Bad luck. Green means press something. So, everything's working as we expected, which is amazing given the amount of work we've done, I must say. Okay, so last thing I want to do in this, uh, sec this session is I want to just say um, thank you, you finished, because we've been uh, annoyingly having that end function getting called, but it doesn't actually show anything, even though it's now waiting for a key press. So let's just write something. So let's make the screen black. You know how to do that, don't you? You fill it with black. Uh, let's make a thing called white, because we're going to need it. For our writing. I'm going to write a couple of things in white here. First thing is... Write it on the screen, as per normal. Thanks for playing. It's polite, isn't it? Write it in white, write it big. And we're going to write something below as well. Telling you what to do next. Press a key to exit. You can click the mouse as well, but we won't bother saying that. It just seems like too much. And then once we've done any drawing on the screen, we have to do pygame.display.flip. So, let's save that. Let's run it. And this time, this is all we're going to do this session. So, we've taken the code that uh, told us to get ready, put one piece of writing on the screen, and we've made a function uh, which can do all kinds of different writing. It can write different words and it can write them in different places because of the different arguments you pass in. Uh, so we've, we're reusing that one piece of code that was for one piece of writing to do loads of different types of writing. Uh, and the, the beginning of how we did that was this thing called refactoring, where we changed the program um, but didn't change what it did. And the really nice thing about doing that is you know absolutely for sure whether or not you've done it right, because you can try it out and it acts exactly the same as it did before. That's particularly good when you've got tests, because you can run all your tests, and all your tests should pass exactly as they did before, um, because nothing, none of the outside behavior of the program has changed. And it's a really good way of getting um, from where you are to where you want to be in a way that doesn't get you too confused um, or too... Um, uh, take it, the, the programmers have this expression like like making a like fixing a car. Uh, if you take it all apart, you get all the pieces all over the floor. Um, then you have no idea how to put them back together again. And that, if you if you change everything in your program um, and don't uh, uh, take everything apart and you know, break everything, and then expect to be able to put it all together and it all works, well, it, it's a big job and you won't uh, you won't do it as well as you think you're going to do it. If you go very, very slowly, one tiny piece at a time, and wherever possible, make the changes which change the structure of your program without changing the behavior of your program. And once your structure's changed and everything's all right, you can then change the behavior of your program in a nice, safe environment because you're not changing any structure. Uh, your life will get better, believe me. Uh, anyway, so uh, we've got some good bits of writing on the screen. I think it's absolutely time we, we drew a red square. Uh, and told you not to press a key when you saw a red square. So that's what we'll do next time. See you then.